Hey everybody, Pat Flynn here and happy Tuesday, our second day of Webinar Wonderland. That's five straight days of webinars about various topics to help you in your business and what it is that you're up to as we enter 2024. We are very close to that start of the new year, so I want to set you up well. We set ourselves up well yesterday with relation to YouTube, and today we're going to be talking about podcasting. Now, podcasting can involve video, and we will be talking a little bit about video podcasting a little bit more toward the end. However, we're going to be talking about podcasting, why it works so well, the things we can look forward to in 2024, and whether you already have a podcast or not, I definitely want to help you get started. And more than YouTube, I've been a podcaster. I've been podcasting for a very long time. I've made a lot of mistakes. And as we're here getting ready to dive in, I want to ask all of you who are here in the chat just to make sure you say hello and feel free to introduce yourself and tell us where you are watching from. Or if you're watching the replay, thank you again so much for chiming in today because we're about to dive in. And I want to start with some questions, in fact. This will be a very interactive session. And again, even if you're watching the replay, you can think about the answers in your head. What's up, Andrew, Tanya? We got Kathy. We got David in the house. Henry, expert, welcome in. So I want to ask you a question. Do you listen to podcast. All you have to do is in the chat type yes or no if you do. I want to get a little read for the room here today. And what's really interesting is that, you know, if you were to ask this question to a crowd maybe even 3 or 4 years ago, the answer would be mostly no. But we've crossed that boundary of more people listening to podcasts than not, which is really amazing. 53% of the population at least in the US are listening to podcasts and that number continues to increase over time. What's up, Dave? Good to see you here. Chef Kibby coming in. What's up from Ohio? That's wonderful. Some people from Hawaii. This is amazing. Will, Gonzo, great. So a lot of people are listening, which is great. And many of you in the room are listeners. And that would make sense because a lot of us are entrepreneurial and we like to listen and gather information as we are uh, on the go, right? Okay, let me ask you, for those of you who said yes, put a number in the chat. How many podcasts are you subscribed to? And I'll tell you, when I first started listening to podcasts, and this was way back in 2008, I couldn't subscribe to, to enough. I was subscribed to so many podcasts that it got to a point where I just didn't have enough time to listen to all of them. On average, people are subscribed to eight different podcasts. And what is really nice about this, it's, it's actually really encouraging, especially if you're just starting out. Because what this means is you don't have to necessarily – try to compete or overtake another person that a person might be listening to. You simply have to just add to their library. How might you be able to create a show that complements the shows that they're already listening to? So although there are a lot of podcasts out there, I'll show you some specific numbers, uh, you don't have to think about it like you have to replace another one. You can add on to it. And look at the numbers here, 10, 15, 25, 3 to 5, 25 plus, too many, says Sparkling Life Coach. Five to 10. Currently, I'm just subscribed to a couple because I've had to narrow it down. But it is very, very addictive to listen, and especially when you consider how people are listening and when. And speaking of, final question here I have for you. When you are listening, for those of you who are listening to one or more shows, how many minutes or hours are you listening for? I want to get a, a, a range of, like, during a, a listening session of yours, how long are you listening for? Now, when... These answers come in. I also also want you to consider the following. When it comes to blog content, I mean, people are spending, you know, five to 10 minutes reading those things, right? They're not even reading every single word. They're kind of skipping around. YouTube, we talked about yesterday. If you have a watch time of three to five minutes on your videos, you're actually doing really, really well. Social media, it's even less than that, of course. A person might see a tweet and then just not even think about it again. I mean, these things are less than a minute, of course. And look at the answers that we're seeing here when it comes to how long people are consuming podcasts for? Two hours, 30 minutes, one hour, one hour, six to eight hours per week. So like an hour a day sometimes, 15 to 30 minutes. By far more than any other platform, including YouTube. People are listening for 30 minutes plus. And that is the huge advantage that podcasting has over literally every other platform. The listening time, the sessions that you have with your audience as a creator is by far much more than anywhere else. So although we don't have the advantage of a YouTube-like platform with the algorithms to get us in front of people, and we'll talk about growth and how to get in front of people in just a minute uh, later in this conversation, but the people who do find you, you can go deep with them because they're with you for a very, very long time. 
In fact, here is a inside radio podcast. Listening time jumps as more listeners are now tuning in weekly. And that is March 14th, 2023 that we're seeing that. But Pat, aren't podcasts saturated? I know a lot of us feel this way. Podcasting has been around for, you know, quite a while now, almost, you know, over 20 years. And it feels like everybody has a podcast now, right? But here are my honest thoughts about it. We are still in the early days of podcasting, similar to how blogs felt in the early 2000s, right? And it might feel saturated, but with a little over a million active podcasts, we're definitely far from it compared to that of hundreds of millions of blogs and tens of millions of YouTube channels. And I was actually corrected. Matt here on Twitter said, no, 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 we're not even close to a million active. Podcastindex.org shows 466,000 active in the last 90 days, but I agree with the sentiment. And that's huge, right? The idea that there actually aren't that many active podcasts out there. There's a lot of people who've started podcasts, especially when like Anchor came out because it was just really easy to start one, but those people weren't committed. You are committed and you are also hopefully enjoying the fact that there's not as much competition as we might think that there is out there, right? I hope it feels good. If that doesn't excite you about this world of podcasting, I don't know what will. So throw a fire emoji in the chat if you're ready to get started, because I wanted to just kind of preface this, set this up for you, set the stage for podcasting and why I am still very, very bullish in the world of podcasting. I see a lot of you as well. Nicole had once had a radio show. That's cool. Beautiful day in the house. John and Bill, welcome. Abraham, great to see you. Janu's two hours. Nice. This is wonderful. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna fly through a lot of this info. The replay will be available right here where you are watching this right now as soon as this ends, which is really great. And look at all those fire emojis coming in. So number one, I ask you to reduce the uh, distractions around you if you can. This is a uh, high level, high pace, fast pace, quality information, I hope. I'll ask you at the end what you got out of this. Uh, but this is gonna be fun, interactive, as you can already tell. There's gonna be some Q&A at the end. You're gonna learn a lot. And you're gonna get a taste of um, the accelerator or excuse me, the Power Up Podcasting course that we have inside of our All Access Pass. We've held accelerators and workshops for podcasting in the past, and you will get the ability to get access to that later if you haven't already. But before we get to that, I do want to set up this idea of podcasting again and kind of what it's like. And if you imagine yourself in a room with you know 30 people, kind of like a room what you're seeing on the screen right now, I mean, that's like a lot of people in a room. But when it comes to a podcast, you can get access to way more people than that. I mean, here's a room of 100 people that you might be speaking in front of. And to do that is very amazing, especially as a creator, to get in front of an audience, to speak to them in a crowd like this. There's a lot that goes into that. The setup of the space, getting there, traveling, getting the audience in one spot. It's a lot. But 100 people in a room, I mean, that's not something to ignore. And then when you have 1,000 people in the room, that's actually me on stage right there at an event. That's a thousand. This is what 1,000 people in a room looks like. And having a thousand listeners for your podcast isn't so far off. It's not so far fetched to think that that's actually possible because it is. And when you consider the fact that these are human beings who are in their daily lives listening to you, it's as if you have them in a room like this with their undivided attention, right? It's pretty amazing what can happen versus when you think about a YouTube channel, right? Even this channel that you're watching, this video that you're watching right now, you can click to exit right there. You can watch another video that's recommended below. There might be other distractions on your computer, but when people are listening to a podcast, they're with you because they have those earbuds in and they're on their run, they're on their walk, they're washing their dishes, they're on travel, they're at the gym, whatever it might be. It's, again, a completely different feel, and the intimacy that you have with your audience is, is, is much like what it would be on a stage, uh, and even more so. Now, I once had a podcast called Food Trucker School. I recently sold this in 2020, uh, but it did very well. And in fact, it was a very niche podcast. The riches are in the niches. And this was specifically for food truck owners. And it got about 900 downloads per episode. So when you think about this from a niche perspective, what a podcast can do for you, I mean, think about this. That's a room full of food truck owners. And that's me, a food truck podcaster. Imagine the power that comes with that. And for those of you who have a podcast already, I don't want you to forget about that, the human being on the other end of that number. And even though you might have, let's say, just hundreds of downloads per episode, those are hundreds of real people in a room just like this. So don't forget that. And what was cool about this is you could see spikes every time a new episode came out, and it was, it was awesome. I mean, we've had over 300,000 downloads before I sold this thing, which was amazing. Now, many of you might know me for this podcast, the Smart Passive Income Podcast. If you listen to this, awesome. Thank you so much. 
and it gets about uh, 115,000 downloads per episode. On average, we've had some episodes with more, some episodes with less, but I'm very, very proud of what we've uh, been able to build, and I only wish that I started sooner. And as I once heard one person say, podcasting is the best way to scale intimacy because it's this right here. It's that moment where a person puts the earbuds on and they put that phone in the pocket after you've started talking or started interviewing somebody and it's just you and them. And it's pretty awesome. I could already see some discussion here in the chat as well about the difference between uh, watching behavior versus listening behavior. So how about you? What's your podcast about or what is your podcast potentially going to be about? Shout it out in the chat. I'll shout out some of them as we are here live today. And again, thank you for joining on this conversation. So what is your podcast going to be about? This this could be you. It will be you. And people can listen and find you and potentially follow, subscribe, potentially be a customer, be a student of yours, come to an event that you put on. What you could build with a relationship that a podcast can enable is incredible. So today here is what we're going to go over. You're going to learn the only piece of equipment that you need to sound like a pro and how to know what the podcast is about so you don't waste your time. Specific strategies that I use to conduct the best podcast interviews and stand out. The number one element all episodes need to start with or else you might lose your listeners for good. We got those podcasts coming in. Self-actualizing, says Tanya. Uh, poker. Um, we have interviews with people about why their dog is cool from Tell Me About Your Dog. Very good. We also have foster and adoptive parents connect with their kiddos, says Chef Tibby. That's amazing. Ghost stories and alcohol. Geopolitical news, that's going to be hot for you next year, especially who we are, why we're here on purpose, says Leslie A. Again, there are so many podcasts about anything and everything. Wooden Boats is one that I know exists, and that person's killing it. Uh, how to get heard, and more specifically, how to make sure you get heard on day one when you launch your show. Secrets about the podcast algorithm. There is an algorithm. It's not quite as extensive or complicated as YouTube, but there still is one. I want to teach you about it. And my number one ninja podcast growth hack that some of my students as a part of Power Up Podcasting are using to grow their show. Some of them are just using that one strategy alone, and I'm gonna teach you. And the monetization, how you might do it other than sponsorships. Yes, you can do sponsorships, but there's many other ways to go about doing that. And we will talk a little bit about video podcasting. In fact, since we're here on YouTube, I'm gonna show you some examples of it. But overall, my goal today is to teach you my best information about podcasting so you can make smart decisions as you move forward. Love the connections happening. A few people telling ghost stories, which is great. A lot of the fiction podcasts are taking off right now, which is amazing. But first, let's start with some myths, just like we did yesterday when we talked about YouTube. It's important to talk about these things that we might be telling ourselves about, not just us, but just the space in general, so we can figure out the truths and then move forward. A lot of times, we often get in our own way. We are our own worst enemy with these things. So let's talk about some of these myths that may block you, but this is why we're talking about them. And podcast myth number one, is that you have to be a great speaker, storyteller, or interviewer in order to succeed. That is not true. It's something that you could lead to, but a lot of things go into a successful podcast, and you don't have to be born this way, as Lady Gaga would say, in order to be a great podcaster. The truth is, it will help you become a better speaker and a better podcaster and a better storyteller. This is a byproduct that most podcasters who stay consistent say, that the podcast world has done for them. It's allowed them to become a better communicator over time. And I wanna ask you, are you ready for an embarrassing photo and audio file? We did this yesterday with my first video that I ever published, and yes, I am gonna share with you a bit of the first audio recording that I had ever recorded. And this comes from December 2008. This is actually me in my parents' house, my old bedroom. When I moved back home after I got laid off from my architecture job, I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I knew inside of me, in my heart and soul, that I wanted to start a podcast. So I bought some equipment. This is the microphone. And this is what that audio sounds like. From, again, 2008, December, the very first audio file I had ever recorded. From the Smart Passive Income blog, uh, thanks for taking the time to listen to this. I think that's so awesome that, uh, you know, you guys are helping me out, figure out all this new podcasting stuff. I'm actually... I uh, just bought a whole bunch of podcasting equipment for myself because, um, I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts, so I figured, hey, why not do one? So, I mean, really, I, I really don't know what I'm going to talk about yet, so I just wanted to get familiar with all the equipment that I have right now and uh, what it's like to post something online and hear what people think about it. So, I mean, 
you tell me, should I give up on podcasting now because my voice sucks so bad, or <laughs> you know, should I talk a little deeper? Or I don't. I really have no idea. So, again, just thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. Keep coming back to the website. I got tons of information coming up in the near future, and uh, let's make two thousand nine a great year for all of us. Let's make it. Let's make it the most profitable year we've ever had. Um, and you know, I'll try my best Wrap to it up, help Wrap you get there. So, again. Good luck with everything. Happy holidays. And this is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income blog signing off. Peace. That is always hard to listen to. Um, but you got to be a disaster before you become the master, right? You got to get cringe before they could binge. That's a good one, actually, especially in this case, because that is very cringe for sure. But we all start somewhere, right? The audio quality sounded good. I had the right microphone. I just had no confidence. I had no idea what I was doing. And I wanted to share that with you because we all start from somewhere. But today, I find that I am a much better communicator, much better storyteller. I've done this now quite a bit. And when I have the opportunity to be a guest on another podcast or even invited on stage, the podcast has helped me get to where I am today. And so that was December 2008. And I listened to that back then, and I was like, there's no way I could publish that. This is this is ridiculous. So I, I just kind of kept that in the archives, and I bring it out every once in a while for this because I know it can help you even though it's cringe. So that was December 2008. My first episode of the SPA podcast didn't come out until July 2010. That's right, a whole year and a half later. A year and a half later. Why did it take me a year and a half to get started? Because I was scared. I didn't think I was good enough because I didn't think anybody would listen to me because there were other people who were doing it much better. And again, looking back, I only wish I actually started in December of 2008 because it wasn't until I started that I could get better. And this is not just a lesson for podcasting. It's really a lesson for anything, right? And now today, many, many more podcasts, Smart Passive Income, Ask Pat, the One Day Business Breakthrough Podcast, Food Trucker, which I sold, all of your bees backs, which was one season along with my son. But the podcast wasn't just great for building communication. It also connected me with some people who I would have never connected with as a result. Gary Vaynerchuk being one of them, Tim Ferriss, a lot of friends that I know now and people that are best friends, Amy Porterfield. These people I would not have connected with if it wasn't for the podcast. In fact, a lot of people start a podcast simply because they know it will enable these conversations with people they want to talk to. They don't even care about the numbers, which I think is an okay way to go about it if you wanted to. It's accounted specifically for more sales. In fact, I'm going to share with you a little bit later the number one episode that I published that helped account for more sales. This was just from one month. And $150,000 came specifically from a single episode of the podcast, which is incredible. And I'm going to share with you exactly what that episode was and why it worked so well. And it was not very salesy at all. And most of all, it's brought the community together. And... The ability to have people connect because they listen to your show is, is an amazing feeling. Kids, adults, it's incredible. And so I want you to build your community, and a podcast is a great way to do that. Yeah, and I don't know why I chose heavy metal. Like, where did that come from? I think it was just like a free stock thing that I could buy back then, and everybody else had metal rock. I, I had no idea what I was doing. Give me some grace. Podcasting myth number two, you have to podcast in a big niche to succeed. Um, and that's not true. The truth is niche podcasting is the secret to growing faster. The riches are in the niches. Here's an example from one of our very own students, Phil Lichtenberger, who has a podcast called Scanner School. And Scanner School is for super nerdy electrician people who want to learn more about those, you know, those radio scanners that you can uh, kind of tune into like emergency lines, radios, like maybe flight paths. Um, ambulances that are by, police scanners, those kinds of things. Like this is a podcast for those people. Super niche. It's a niche and a niche and a niche and a niche. Yet, Phil's had some amazing success as a result of this. In fact, here's a message that came in. He said, I just had to come here to share. It's a very funny feeling to realize that you've created super fans. Yes, from, a, from scanning things. Uh, I have listeners who follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and now YouTube. They comment on every podcast, and they're there for almost every Facebook Live session I'm doing. This is just six months after starting his show, 24 episodes release. He's got a tribe now as a result. He says, Pat, thank you for the course. Yep, anyway, he's been doing good. Sophie Walker, who I had on the podcast this past year, she has a podcast called Australian Birth Stories. She interviews moms or mums, as they say in Australia, M-U-M, who are going through their first pregnancy or who have just recently gone through their first pregnancy. 
And what a valuable thing to do for new moms who want to know what it's actually going to be like and to make them feel a little bit less alone in that process. And she's done very well. In fact, her podcast has blown up on Australia, so much so that certain medical organizations require their employees to now listen to her podcast. People listen to her podcast to get continuing education now for their line of work. It's grown so well, and she's just done amazing. And that's her full-time full time gig now. Here's one of our members, Maria from SPI Pro, who has the Growing Joy podcast. She helps people who want to know more about houseplants, and she connects it to life lessons as well. But very, very niche, and she also has a book now as a result of this. Niche podcasts are great. You might think that you're leaving people out as a result of that, but you know what you're actually doing? You're bringing people more in because it's something that they feel more that they can belong to, right? So keep that in mind. Another myth, you can't make big money until you get big listenership, and that's not true either. Podcasting truth number three, the brand loyalty you build with your podcast is where you can earn money. The more loyal that your audience is, which is the best thing about podcasting, the more that you can command when it comes to these sponsorships and advertising brand deals that you could do. This is this is uh, from the Fire Science Show. Um, Wojcik is his first name. And he said, hey, Pat, hope you're having a great uh, trip in Hawaii. I wanted to share with you that I've made it. I have just signed a, this is where the number is, and I didn't feel comfortable sharing it, but it's multi tens of thousands of dollars, yearly sponsorship deal for my podcast at just a little above 50K total listens and 600 listens per episode. That's it, 600 downloads per episode. And this person, even though there's just 600 downloads per episode, was able to command a sponsorship deal for a year that made him more than his day job. How did he do that? Because he shared with his company the value that having that brand in front of this loyal audience would be. And he's been able to do really, really well. So that's really, really cool. So congratulations to him. So type in the chat, let's do this if you're ready to go because we are about to get started with the main portion of the show, the content, the strategies. I could have talked about this in the beginning, but I think we need to get over a lot of those mindset things first because that getting over those is really important. I could tell you and teach you everything you need to know about podcasting, but unless you know up here that you can do it, that this is possible, that you don't need to go huge and create something that changes the entire world, you just need to create something that changes somebody's world. When you understand that you can do this and you have that ability, then it's gonna unlock for you. So let's do it. All right, so, nice. Let's talk about it. How to sound like a pro. Obviously, an audio podcast is gonna need good audio. You have to have, that's table stakes, right? And even if you have a video podcast, I would argue that a that the audio for your video show is more important. How do I know this? Because you will watch videos with terrible video quality so long as you can hear what the people are, what's happening and what's going on. If you have a video that has really good video quality, but the audio is terrible, you can't even hear it, well, you're leaving. Therefore, audio is more important. And the piece of equipment that you need to make this great is, of course, a microphone. And there are a gazillion different micro microphones that you could choose from. You can have the best audio content in the world, but if your audio quality is bad, nobody will listen. Now, I'm using a mic right now that you might see. It's quite heavy. It's big. It's called the Heil PR40. This is the one that I like grew up on as an entrepreneur or a podcaster. And it's one that I would say is a serious professional podcasting mic. But when you're starting out, I actually wouldn't recommend a mic like this because there are a lot of other cheaper, easier to use mics that will sound just as good unless your uh, audience are sound engineers. You're gonna be fine, right? The problem with this mic as well is not only is it more expensive, but I also need another device or another box to plug it into that then plugs into my computer. There are microphones that will literally just plug straight into your computer like these mics right here. That is me without a beard, which is very strange looking. I just need to color a beard on that because that just freaks me out. Anyway, these mics here, like the Audio-Technica ATR2100X or the Samsung Q2U are great. The, the one in the middle there is the one that most people are choosing nowadays. It's like 50, 60 bucks, plugs in via USB, and you're ready to go. So super easy to, to, to use and super easy to, to understand. It just turn it on, you go. You don't have to worry about plugging into anything else, all right? Now, as far as editing tools, which you're gonna need, you're gonna need to edit your show, right? Not, it's very uncommon to have a podcast recording that's just as soon as you're done recording, it's ready to ship, right? Maybe you wanna insert some audio music in the beginning or you wanna have a really um, 
interesting part that was mentioned in the middle of the show in the beginning to hook people. Maybe you want to add some uh, different segments in the middle. Whatever it is you want to do, you're going to need a program. These two are very simple and are also free to use. If you have a Mac, GarageBand is what I started with for three to four years before I moved on to an Adobe product, Adobe Audition. But Audacity is one that's available for PC and Mac as well. That's free. There's some lessons on YouTube that uh, are very widely viewed by yours truly that can help you wa work through how to go through those if you want. And of course, those are also those lessons are in power of podcasting as well. As far as recording interviews, Zoom is great. It's okay. I mean, you're not going to get the best quality audio, and especially if you're using video as well in your po video podcast, Zoom is mid. Zoom is mid, as the kids would say. Um, you know, Squadcast, though, is bussin'. That's what the kids would say also, right? No cap. So I would use Squadcast, but Zoom is a little bit more uh, economical for most people. People are very familiar with it, but Squadcast is great too. These are the tools that you're going to, again, use to connect with a person for an interview and then capture that video and audio quality, right? So I'm not gonna dive too much into the equipment and in the course, if you go into it, you can follow along step-by-step, -step, hook things up properly. I wanna talk about creating compelling content because that's what we need to do on our podcast. We need to create compelling content, right? So we need to first think about, well, what, what's already out there that's proven to work, right? You might have a website or a, a YouTube channel um, you might be able to investigate other podcasts, other YouTube channels. What topics are of interest to your audience? I would obviously ask your audience too. Um, and also think about what questions are people asking you? You can make an entire episode or excuse me, an entire podcast like I did, totally based on just the questions that people are asking you, right? And you can go deep into that. You can bring guests to help support the show or just answer it yourself and be an authority. Telling stories. Storytelling is, is something that is... Uh, it's a shame if you don't storytell on your podcast. Even if you have more of an educational type of podcast, podcasting is set up for storytelling. People are listening on the go. They're not going to click away. If you envelop them into a story and you learn about how to tell a great story and there's an arc to the thing that you're sharing and it relates to obviously what it is that your topic is or your product or whatever it is your message is going to be, I mean, this is a great way to build a deep connection and make something relatable. Podcasting is perfect for story. People just hear that voice. They hear that. You can enhance it with audio, background, music, other things if you want to, but you don't need to. If you tell a real story that relates to the person on the other end, they're going to listen and they're going to want more. And then, of course, interviews. You don't have to have guests on your show to have a podcast. There are many successful podcasts that just have the one host and that's it. However, for most people, I would recommend, even if it's not all the time, still having guests on your podcast. And here's the main reason. You get to spend several minutes with somebody and you build a relationship with, a, with them. You cannot help but do that. And a lot of times those relationships that start with an interview on a podcast, on your show, turn into something much more. It could turn into a, a partnership, a business partnership, a JV, a joint venture partnership. It could just be a connection that you now have in the space. You continue to do favors for them and they do favors for you and it's just a partnership occurs. Or they just become your best friend, like has happened for a lot of podcasters who've once had guests on their show, right? What an amazing way to grow your network. And as many people say, your network is your net worth. So podcasting can be a great way. Again, some people start a show just for that alone. And uh, it would be a shame for you not to do that. Now, on the, on the flip side, there's people who have podcasts that are only interviews. I would recommend that if that's you or if that's what you're thinking, every once in a while, have it be just you. A little bit harder to record sometimes, especially if you're not used to doing a full episode yourself. But what that does for you is sporadically throughout your catalog, you show up and it's just you and you can get more intimate with just you and your audience member. You get to build yourself up more as an authority by teaching these things, by maybe wrapping up the previous X number of interviews you've done and putting them together in a solo episode that summarizes it and, and actually takes it even further, brings even more lessons into it. Maybe you just tell your story in one episode. That's really helpful too. So that's why I feel if you had to make a choice, I would pick one as your primary and then the other as a supplement. I wouldn't necessarily say you have to do 50-50, which I also knew some people do, but here's the cool thing. It's your podcast. You can do whatever you want with it. Just I'm trying to recommend other opportunities for you to benefit from the other side of it too. So if you are going to be doing some storytelling with a guest, I would love for you to pay attention here because I'm going to share with you some special tips that I've learned over the years. I've conducted over a thousand interviews across different podcasts. I've been a guest on many other podcasts as well. 
and I want to share with you some of my best stuff. So number one, the interview starts before it happens, right? So what I mean by that is in the setup in the days and or weeks leading up to that interview, you wanna set the tone, especially if you are having that guest come on your show. You want you want them to feel as comfortable as possible, but if it has been difficult, if it's been an uphill battle to even just get together and it's not a smooth ride, then the interview doesn't kind of, it's not as smooth of an interview. If you can make things easy for that person to come on your show and know when to come on and just, again, be communicative, so that there is some expectation of what it is that the show's gonna be about. You don't have to necessarily share questions. In fact, I don't recommend doing that. If a person asks, what are the questions that you're gonna ask? I don't give them the questions. I give them the topic that I wanna talk about because I don't know where the show's gonna go necessarily. The f- shows that flow are the ones where you're not show- sure it's gonna go. I tried to make that rhyme and it didn't work as well. But what I mean is sometimes you're gonna go down a path that you weren't even expecting to but you kind of follow the energy of where that interview is going. And I got more about that here, but make the other person feel comfortable. One way that I do that is when we get on Squadcast or Zoom, I tell that person immediately, hey, I haven't hit record yet. And I also say, you know, I want us to feel like we're at a coffee shop and we're just having a coffee together. And I'm just asking questions, learning more about you. And when I do that, I can sometimes see the person's shoulders come down as if they've, they've just relaxed a little bit. And when the person is relaxed and feeling comfortable on the other end, um, they're gonna feel much better about sharing things that maybe they haven't shared elsewhere. Asking open-ended questions is great as well. This way you can get the person to talk. I mean, it's your job as the interviewer to prompt the right questions and stories and get out of the way, right? Hunt for the story. You wanna ask, and this is a great setup, tell me about a time when blank, right? Hey, so I know you are a writer. Tell me about a time when writing was actually a struggle for you. And then you sit back and listen. You don't have to put your hands up like that. Actually, that would be weird if you did that and the person saw that. They're like, why uh, why are you throwing your hands up? I'm doing that to demonstrate you get out of the way. You prompt them. Tell me about a time when you spent a lot of money on something and regretted it. Tell me about a time when your wife surprised you. That's it. It's that simple. And then you get out of the way. This prompts a story. And to further enhance that story, what that person's going to do, you know, they're going to tell details of it. But they're, they're, they're also going to stop talking because they want to be respectful to you as the host. And then here's what you do. Why did you do that? What were you feeling in that moment? Well, what happened next? Those simple follow-up questions is how you dig deeper to get to the gold in your interviews. Because the gold is deep and you need to dig for it. A lot of us, I think, have gotten a little bit too complacent with the questions that we're asking. You need to dig a little bit deeper. Much like how a kid will continue to ask why because they're curious, well, you should be just as genuinely curious too. And when you are genuinely curious about the topics or the questions or the story that this person is telling, you're just gonna ask the right questions anyway. The same ones that your audience is having along with you, right? Tell me about a time when your dog made you proud. Oh, that's a good one. And then listen, listening is one of the hardest things to do as a podcaster because you're so worried about the next question or where it's gonna go. Just listen and be curious. That's my best tip for you. Okay. Next, let's talk about the hook. You're gonna see some examples, especially when we look into the video podcasting, because if you're gonna do video podcasting, the hook is even more important. But nowadays, even with a podcast that's audio only, a hook in the beginning of your show is really important. This is the thing that's gonna get them to put that phone in their pocket and go on that run. The hook is the thing that they're going to do to put those earbuds in and then go on that drive. It's the thing that they load up And make sure it's good before they go on that flight and they have no more Wi-Fi connection. Every episode should start with some kind of hook. And there's many different ways to go about it, right? You could literally just tell people what's coming and why it's so important, right? 2024 is right around the corner. And if you're doing any sort of advertising on Instagram or Facebook, you're gonna wanna make sure you listen to this full episode because by the end, you're gonna know exactly how to save the most money. Truthfully, if you don't listen to this episode, the three tips that I'm gonna share with you, I mean, that could be the difference between you spending thousands of dollars and getting no leads, or just spending hundreds of dollars and getting the best leads, the best quality leads. That's what we're gonna talk about today, so make sure to listen in. 
That's just an example. I'm just making that up off the top of my head. But as you can see, that preps a person to go, okay, yep, that's exactly what I want. Boom, in the pocket. Back in the day, there was a lot more room for just like banter and fluff. Leave the fluff for the bunnies. Get into it now. People want to know if what they clicked on is exactly what they're hoping for. There's an expectation of what they click on based on that title or based on the title of your podcast. Give them something that makes them go, yep, that magic moment where they put that phone in their pocket, that's what you need to lead to, okay? Good. So that's the basis for the hook. Now, you could take a part from the middle of that podcast, maybe a very tension-driven moment, and bring it into the front of your show. And now people go, whoa, 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 whoa I have, what happened? How did the, why did that person say that? Oh, okay, I'm going to listen to this episode, right? That's great. Real Things Living says, you hooked me. <laughs> Good. Now practice. You're not going to get it right all the time. And the beauty of audio podcasting is you can just keep trying and keep recording different things. Or you could potentially script them out. I wouldn't script an entire episode. But the hook is that important that you could script it out and, and try to nail it. Because that is a very important part of the process. Okay, so you got your podcast. Your episodes are ready to go. You need to get heard. And I'm going to teach you something that we teach in our course, Power Up Podcasting, that makes sure that you get heard on day one, and it's based on a big mistake that I made. You want to launch it like it's an event. Too many people who come out with podcasts aren't treating it like it's a big deal. It is a big deal, not just for you and your career and your business, but it should be a big deal to your audience as well, much like how when a uh, streaming platform comes out with a brand new show. They hype it up. They bring some attention to it before it even before it's even ready, right? You want to you want it launched like it's an event. You want to pick a date like you would for an event. You invite the party, you get the venue ready, right? You're setting everything up, making sure it all works, and then you tease what's coming and then you launch, right? Imagine if you were a musician right and you were getting ready for you know a big debut concert that you had i mean it would be silly for you to just show up on a stage not having told people about it <laughs> right that would be that would be wild that would be such a waste right you want people to get excited about this what's coming who are your guests what are the topics that are being talked about tease some parts of it on social media in short form video talk about some of the things that that you discussed that just kind of that people in your audience could look forward to, right? Get the people in those seats and then you launch. But don't make the same mistake I did. I launched with just one episode. And that was a mistake because let's go with the concert analogy, right? You're a musician. You did your job. You got butts in seats. You play one song and then you leave. I mean, you worked so hard to get those people there. Those people had to drive and travel to buy that ticket, to sit on those seats. They've waited. You tested your lighting. You tested your audio and the amp and everything, and you got there. You played one song, and then you leave. And for many people, that one song is just an introduction about the songs that are coming, and then you leave. Don't do that. You want to have a few songs to play. And by song, I mean podcast episodes. So what I would recommend and what we teach is to launch with three. Yes, launch with three. That means there will be three episodes on the day you let people know it's time to listen, right? So a few, exactly. Tell me about your dog says, you need to have a, at least a few episodes ready when you launch. And what this does is a few things. Number one, there's just more for people to listen to. So now they're getting deeper into the brand. They're hearing your voice more. They're going from one episode to the next to the next, which does help with algorithms. But also they're hearing that message. They're hearing that call to action to your newsletter. They're hearing you mention your website and that message that you teach across each episode. They also have the opportunity to maybe get more interested in episode three. Maybe episode three is more interesting to them. They wouldn't listen to the first two first based on what you have there. But episode three, that speaks to them. So you make each episode about something maybe a little bit different, like a sub-niche or a component of, of what it is that you teach. And then you get people interested. They might listen to three and then one and two, or three and two and one, or two and three and one, or two, one, three, or one, two, three, or one, three, two. I think that's all the combinations. So this gives more opportunity for people to even start listening to you once you've got them in the concert hall. 
and that's where it happens. You know, you get more reviews that way, you get more call to actions, it helps bump up your rankings, which is what we're gonna talk about in a minute. But in addition to your audio, really important as auditorially as podcasting is, as audio based as podcasting is, it's also very visual for those who are just finding you because as you can see on the screen, you have your artwork. Your podcast artwork is actually really, really important. It's the first thing that a person will see. It's one of the only things a person will see before they hit play. So it's very important. Here's some artwork from some of our students, which is great. My favorite one is the New 30 podcast. That's a great one. The Less Stressed Life is great. Letterpress Digest is all right. I don't like the cursive because cursive at a small scale. Remember, people are looking and finding these on their phone. So as much as we want to design these big, which you are required to design them big because Apple wants them to be able to be uh, usable and visual on TVs all the way down to a phone or even a watch. But remember, many people are viewing these on their, on their, on their app. Uh, so you need to make sure that it is legible at a small scale. I would say like 50 by 50, right? Um, which is interesting. You have to submit it at 3,000 by 3,000. I think the minimum is, is 1,400 by 1,400 pixels, but shrink it down as you're designing it, or if you have a designer helping you, make sure that at a small scale, it could still be seen, right? I see some great questions here. Relaunching an existing podcast, you could absolutely do that. I wouldn't start a new one. I wouldn't even apologize for not having come out with content for a while come out with a bang, launch, relaunch with three new episodes. Hey guys, been been away, but we're back and we're back strong. Here's what you can look forward to. Here are three new episodes for you. Boom, you make an announcement, you hype it up, and you just continue as if nothing happened, right? Uh, Laurentina says, question, Pat, do you think writing a transcript in advance and reading it when recording a podcast is a bad idea? I do, uh, and I do because I can speak from experience that when you do that, A, it takes so much longer to do. B, when you read it, you're gonna sound more boring. You're gonna sound like a robot. It's very difficult to read a script and sound like you're not reading a script. And although that is possible, I would encourage you for a final reason to trust yourself. Come up with a detailed bullet point list. Here are the stories you're gonna talk about and then you trust yourself to tell those stories. Here are the points that you're gonna make and then you trust yourself to support that with what you share and your experience with it. It is much more natural that way. It's much more relatable. It's much more uh, able to build a, repu uh, a rapport with your audience in that manner. So let's talk about Apple Podcast rankings. Number of new subscribers plus downloads plus ratings within a short period of time equals higher rankings. Yes, this isn't a perfect formula, but what we're basically saying here is that velocity equals higher rankings. And when you get ranked on Apple and Spotify, you will see a great load of new people come in. You're not going to be there forever. If you are, awesome. But this is how you get there, right? And you can stay there for a while, especially if there's some momentum, but it's velocity. It's very similar to Amazon books if you've ever sold books on Amazon. You get a lot of subscribers downloading a lot of episodes and leaving ratings and reviews within a short period of time. You're going to see higher rankings. And this is why the launch is so important because that's when those things happen, especially initially. But if you're relaunching a show or maybe you're 50 episodes in and 51 is a banger and you have a really special guest on, okay, let's let's make a campaign around this single episode to get more subscribers, more downloads, more ratings and reviews in a short period of time, just around this little event. Create events or campaigns around it. That's how you can continue to rise in the rankings. Besides experience, what's a helpful tool to help with storytelling says Let's Grow? Um, check out the Hero's Journey. There's a great TEDx video, a uh, TED education video about this, the hero's journey. We all have the ability to tell a story in that way. It's not just fiction. I didn't know this, but my story is a hero's journey. Nine to five job. This is the ordinary. Call to action. I got let go. I was in a new world, slaying new dragons, fighting the demons that were inside my head. Come out the other end. Yes, with a new job, but as a new person, ready to tackle the world in a new way. This is the hero's journey that we see in Harry Potter, in all these stories. You are living that as well. Your students might have some of them. Bring those out in the podcast. Your guests might have their own version of a hero's journey. Bring that out as well. 
Okay, great questions. We'll save some more questions for the end. But let's move into my number one ninja growth hack. Now, when I share this with you, I guarantee some of you are going to react and go, really? Like, that's actually not good, not what we're supposed to do. But hear me out. I'm going to teach you how to do it the right way. But my hack is to utilize forums and groups. Forums and groups. So Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, forums. Very, very important. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through this right now. Because you might be thinking, okay, forums and groups. You go in there and you say, hey, everybody, like I got a podcast. You should listen to it. You might think, okay, well, make sure you're providing value for that target audience in that forum or group. Like let, let's just take a Facebook group, for example. No matter what you create, if you come into a group and you start saying, hey, look at me, or this is, check out my podcast, even if it's the most helpful thing in the world, because it's yours and you are promoting it, it's not going to come across very well. I mean, imagine this in real life, a person coming into your, your workspace and says, hey, guys, look at me. I have something that's helpful for you. Who are you? Where did you even come from? Right? It's not going to work. Right? So that's not going to work. It can become across as spammy. You might get banned. We don't want that to happen. So how might we utilize these groups and forums? Well, let me teach you. Let's just say, for example, that, okay, there was a person here. Tell me about your dog. Right? This is a podcaster in the audience right now. I'm just going to use you as an example. We're going to go to Facebook. And in fact, I wonder if we could do this right here. Like maybe we should just do this live. Maybe we, should we just do this live? Okay, let's do it live. All right, so here we are on Facebook. And yes, I'm a part of Pokemon TCG groups here in the San Diego, San Diego area. But I'm going to go to search groups. I'm going to go, uh, let's go dog training. And here we are, dog training. Look at this public group. 4.3, so 4,300 members, 5,000 members here. Look at this, 16,000 members here. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I could have my podcast shared amongst these group, this group of people, right? That'd be wild. Well, guess what? You can, but not in the way that I shared earlier by just going in there, right? So let's let's go. I'm going to go to this group. I'm not going to join it right now. I mean, you probably should. I'm going to scroll down and look at that, members. Oh, look at that. It also tells me who the admins of these members are. Joel. Alexandra, Garrett, Joel, and three other members are admins. It literally tells me who the founders are. There's Joel right there. She is the she's the ad the main admin. I'm gonna go message Joel. I'm not gonna actually message her. So just let me share you what the what the message would be. Here's what I'm doing. I'm going to craft a podcast episode, a single podcast episode that's gonna feature five different owners of various groups. Joel is going to be target number one. I'm going to reach out to Joel and ask, Joel, I have an audience of people learning how uh, to, to, to work with their dogs. And you being a prolif prolific dog trainer, and you own this group. I would love your number one tip and I want to share it. I want to feature you on that podcast. What are the chances that Joel here, who owns this forum, who likely doesn't get a lot of love for the hard work that she does on this platform, what are the chances that she is going to say yes to this opportunity, to share a little bit about herself and her group. The chances are very, very likely, right? And there's a really fun way to do this. If you go to, let's go back to the computer. If we go to speakpipe.com slash pad, it could be whatever, but I'm going to speakpipe.com slash pad. This is a website that you could set up for your own brand where you could just send a link to somebody. And that link will have a button, as you see here, to start recording a message. I get that as an MP3 file that I can now put into a podcast episode. So now I got Joelle's number one tip. And now I'm going to go back to Facebook and get uh, Jody's tip from this other group. I'm going to get Garrett's tip from this other group. I have an episode now with five single tips from five different people. What are the chances that these owners who are featured in this episode – are going to share this podcast episode with their group. The chances are extremely likely. Why though? 
it's extremely likely that they're going to share your podcast because you've made them look good. You've given them a place to speak, to share, to have a little platform. You've shared the stage a little bit. You've made them look great, and now they get to look great in front of their people. They're almost 100% always going to do it. Not all the time, maybe 99.99%, right? Speak pipe, P-I-P-E, speak pipe. Sorry the URL uh, wasn't showing in that screenshot there. So you're going to get your podcast shared into these groups with thousands of people without even having to post yourself. You are not only getting your podcast shown in there, but you're also getting literally endorsed by the group owner who has already earned the trust with those people. Tanya says, evil genius, OMG, I love you. People love sharing when it's about them. And when you have a podcast, you can make it about them. <laughs> you can make it about them. So I hope this is this is coming through, right? Th these are the kinds of strategies that we teach in Power Up Podcasting and especially our 201 course, Amped Up Podcasting. If you have a podcast already, if you're a part of the All Access Pass, you get access to all of our courses, of course. And we're going to be doing an accelerator in January for those of you who have a podcast. That means you're going to be able to go through that course and learn strategies like this with other people. If you're just getting set up first, though, Power Up Podcasting is the way to go. Anyway, this strategy works extremely well. And like I said earlier, some students of ours are using just this one strategy alone to get put into all these different groups. You know, and you can mix it up. And here's the second level of this strategy. Let's say Joel, let's say we did this uh, episode with five different podcasts, right? Or five different um, groups featured in it. And it, it, first of all, it's an extremely helpful episode for your audience, right? It's a win for everybody. I did this on my food trucker site, not for a podcast, but for a blog post. I got like 100 different food truckers to share their best tip. And that post went viral. These episodes can go viral too. It's very helpful to see all these different perspectives and get some great tips from people who are obviously at the top of their space. Just don't get a lot of love usually. Let's say Joelle's tip was amazing. And you really like her vibe and you like the way she talked. And it was just like, I can imagine interviewing her on a podcast. Well, you reach back out to Joelle and you say, hey, Joelle, Pat here. Uh, the episode with your tip was amazing. In fact, I have so many people saying they loved yours. I would love for you, Joelle, to come on the show and just be like, I want to interview you and learn more about you and your community. What do you say? So this is like phase two, step two. The reason I didn't start with that is because I don't know Joelle and I don't know if her tip's going to be great or not. Not every tip is going to be a home run, but at least if it's not a home run, it's a small little clip that's in a podcast episode from a person versus an entire episode that's dry, right? This is how I'm using that tips podcast to then filter to find the person that I should really connect with. And guess what? I'm able to now build a relationship with them. You like my dabbing Santa sweater? Um, I don't even remember where I got it, to be honest. So this, this do it. Do that. Do what I just said. <laughs> Monetization. Let's talk about generating revenue with your podcast. Yes, you can do sponsors and ads and those kinds of things, but I want you to try this instead because sometimes it takes a little bit of time for you and some longevity with your show to get to a point where you have enough listeners because advertisers will want to know if you have enough listeners or not. It's becoming less that that is the only rule. There are examples I shared one earlier of people who have very few downloads but are still able to get really good sponsorships because the brand connection to the loyalty of that audience is so strong. So it's not impossible, but there's other ways to generate revenue that are much, much um, easier and faster, in my opinion. Get new students and customers if you have a product, obviously. But if you don't have your own product, you should try affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is the ability for you to recommend other people or other companies' products and get paid a commission for that. This is how I generated most of my revenue at the start of my business career was not by creating my own products, but by recommending other people's products, using them and then talking about them, everything from equipment like this microphone to other courses that I've been a part of, even coaches that I've had, recommending them and getting paid a commission for that. Works really well. And you don't need to wait until you have a large audience to do that. In fact, I would recommend if you know you have a product that would serve your audience, even if it's an audience of one, it is worth doing. So you should, yeah, put it into your first episodes. If it is genuinely going to help them, 
and you genuinely talk about your story and transformation using that product or just it relates to what it is you're talking about, talk about it and share your affiliate link in that podcast episode. Because although you might not have a lot of listeners on day one, let's say two years down the road, you now have a thriving podcast. People are going to go back to that first episode. And guess what? You planted those seeds. Those are seeds that you plant ahead of time. And those things people will listen to over time. I, in fact, we get a lot of people. In fact, I don't know what our split is, but we have just as many people listening to our back catalog as they are listening to our front catalog and the newer episodes that are coming out. It's kind of wild, actually. When you're in the All Access, will we also get to be in upcoming events? Absolutely. Once you're in, you get to participate in anything that you'd like that we have to offer, stuff that relates to you. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but I appreciate you asking. Sell events if you have events. Podcasting is a great way. Maybe you bring people who were at last year's event on to talk about how great it was. Again, a great platform for storytelling. And if it's a great platform for storytelling, it's also a great platform for story selling. Okay? And then Patreon. Patreon is a cool model where people will support you just because they want you to stick around, right? They'll so they'll say, I'll, I pledge $5 per month or $10 per month. And you can give them access to different things at different levels as well. But um, Patreon is a great model that a lot of people are, are literally living off of, right? I know a podcaster who's making $12,000 a month. He doesn't sell any products. He's in the tech space, but he specifically has enough people to support him and his career by just simply being fans, which is pretty cool. Now, I shared that I was going to share this episode with you, and it's about time. The most profitable podcast I've ever published. And this was episode 275, Real Stories and Results from Three Brand New Podcasters. The product I was promoting at this time was a podcasting course. In fact, it's the course that we're talking about right now, which is called Power Up Podcasting. This was an episode where I invited three beta testers. This was when I was launching this thing for the first time in 2017 or 2018. I invited three beta testers, people who took that course before anybody else, it was just a limited group, onto my podcast. And I invited, who did I invite on? I invited Dr. B, who has a podcast she started, thanks to our course about ADHD, Dr. Shannon Irvin, from Epic Success Podcast, and Rob and Carrie from Disney Travel Secrets, travel agents who wanted to use a podcast to grow their business. I specifically chose these people for specific reasons. Dr. B, she was over 65 years old, and she wanted to start a podcast. In fact, she was scared that she couldn't do it because the tech was too complicated for her, or so she thought. And in that episode, I don't ask her questions like, hey, tell me why Power Up Podcasting was the most amazing course you've ever taken. Tell me about Power Up Podcasting and why you would recommend it to others. I didn't have to do that. All I asked was, what were the hardest parts about starting a podcast for you? She said, oh, Pat, the technology scared me to death, but your course made it so easy. I just followed your your step-by-step your -step instructions and I was able to do it. And so imagine listening to this episode, being scared of technology, and hearing a person who was also scared of technology actually do it how, from our course, how this can help sell the course. With Dr. Shannon Irvin, she had an offline business and wanted to bring it online, so we uh, recorded her transformational story and what the podcast had done for her. And then Rob and Carrie, like I said, wanted to increase their business, so of course, I'm asking questions for them, like, how did the podcast help your business? And now I'm able to cover people who have different reasons to start a podcast all in one episode, right? Uh, yes, this is live, but there will be a replay. That's from Real Talk Keto. Yes, this is live, but there will be a replay available right here, right as soon as this ends in about 10 minutes. This podcast episode has earned over $150,000 just from this one episode. I know because when we uh, sold this, we asked, well, how did you find out about this? And the podcast was how it was done. This is how strong a podcast can help you. And if you have anything that you ever sell, you should use your podcast not to sell, but to story sell. Invite your own students on and their transformations become the hero of the story. And people, when they hear a hero's journey, they wanna go to the guide that helped that hero get there. And that guide is you, all right? So let's talk about video podcasting. Video podcasting is something that was made popular by, of course, Joe Rogan. 
We're going to see some examples here in just a second. But video podcasting is definitely something that's on a lot of people's minds, especially when it comes to starting a podcast. Or maybe you have an audio podcast and you're like, should I do video podcasting? Maybe. Not always a clear yes and not always a clear no. Video podcasting, adding the video component to your podcast, yes, you can just turn on the cameras on Zoom or on Squadcast. You can collect those. But in order to really make it work on YouTube specifically, which is where video podcasting is living right now, yes, there is video podcasting on Spotify, but YouTube is where it's at. You do a video podcast because you want more people to find your show and you want to deliver it in a fashion with video that those people would enjoy. In order to make it a video that they would enjoy, you do need to do a little bit more heavy lifting there, right? That's the downside of video podcasting is you need to worry about the video and you also need to worry about titles and thumbnails. And everything we talked about yesterday in the YouTube strategy um, webinar, Wonderland Week Day yesterday, um, it's, it's like building a whole nother thing, right? So that's something that you're going to have to, um, hey, thank you, Ed's lessons. I appreciate that. I did not ask you to say that, but I, I really appreciate that. Uh, some just kind words about power up podcasting from a, a student who's literally in the middle of going through it right now. Anyway, let's share with you some video podcasts and how we can make them work on video. Now, I'm not going to play any of Joe Rogan's, uh, but he was, of course, the one who made video podcasting popular. And of course, he's got the benefit of having access to celebrities. I mean, he's got Elon Musk on the podcast and all these people, com comedians, politicians, etc. He's going to draw in a crowd simply from who is on the show. So he doesn't even have to do much editing. He just he just he can just turn on the camera, right? Now here's another podcast. This is from Colin and Samir. This is her uh, one of their guests, Emma Chamberlain. I'm going to play the intro for you because I want to teach you about, especially on video, the hooks at the beginning of these podcasts. I'm going to. This one has a lot of editing, front loaded at the beginning of the show. Again, this is a video podcast done in a studio, so it's a little bit higher production, but I wanted to, to show this to you because it's a good example of a, of a very popular video podcast that is working right now for Colin and Samir. I was not doing well. YouTube is an addiction. It's an addiction. You're in show business, we're not. That's just different. I would hope that feels different. Brands are gonna have to shift up the way that they do brand deals soon. Do you remember the amount? Well, can I tell you something that's insane? Oh, shit. Like, that's a lot. Would you ever act? Actually, I don't think I've ever told the story. Is there anything you would change? I'm excited to get into this. <laughs> Today on The Colin and Tamir Show, we're joined by Beautiful hook, a lot of editing. I mean, we could play it back and you can see there's probably like a hundred cuts there. Zoom in, zoom out, text, this. But as you can see, those were like high tension moments during the middle of the episode that make you go, what, what are they talking about? It is especially important on YouTube to do that. Now we can bring and carry that over to the audio format as well, which you should a little bit. But this this is just, this is the, this is the prime YouTube way to do it in that way. And I'm just being honest with you, it's a lot. Now, you don't have to go down that route, though. There are some other video podcasters who are doing it in different kinds of ways, right? So let me show you some, another example. This is Rob from Tesla Daily. And the interesting thing about Rob's podcast is it actually is audio first, and he just adds pictures, graphs, and B-roll. B-roll is videos that play while he's talking. I'm going to play the intro of this podcast for you. This is not him anywhere here. These, this is a video of something that happened in the news recently all about Tesla. Hey, everybody. Rob Mauer here. Welcome back to Tesla Daily. Today, we've got a handful of updates on the Cybertruck, including more people being invited to order an awesome new video from Sandy Monroe going through some of the engineering details with some of Tesla's team and a few other updates as well. All right. Looking at the stock, slower start to the week for Tesla down 1.7% to $239. So I'm not going to play the rest of this, but as you can see, he's showing relevant information. He has images and videos playing, or he will play videos, and it's just his voice. So that's really cool, and it's a way for you to do it without having to necessarily record a separate video. This is his audio podcast with some video components in it. Now, that might make you ask, well, can I just have one image? I mean, technically, you could have one image, but is, are people going to be interested in watching that? No. That would actually do your channel more harm than good because what happens is people are going to see that expecting to see things visually, not see things visually and leave, which signals to YouTube, well, people come to this channel and they leave, so it's not worth promoting, right? We're not going to push it out to more people, right? When you help YouTube, YouTube will help you, and you got to keep people on the platform. All right, the final example I'll give you is probably my favorite video podcasting example because it's filmed like this is Ramit Sethi from I Will Teach You To Be Rich. 
And however you feel about him, doesn't really matter. He's done a genius job with video podcasting in a way that is more accessible, meaning he's in his home, he's recording over Zoom, and he's bringing it together. This is how, and pay attention to the hooks, pay attention to the background music, and then we're gonna go a little bit until we get to the part with text, which is another way to support and show engaging things here on a, again, a video podcast that is published both in audio and video format. Why are you still putting things on your credit cards that we aren't, you aren't paying off every month. I'm not gonna bring all of mine to the table to piss it away because that's what's happened for two years. We've made $180,000 and we have nothing except you live with me in my world that I help facilitate and try to make your life easier. In a way I feel sometimes like I pay a tax for you living here. If we're just gonna continue down this like road of parallel lives, if we're not gonna do this and if we're not gonna become this team and like really attack life and create this like extraordinary life, then, then I have to rethink why I'm here. Becky's 42 years old, Dustin is 36. They've been together for four years. Wow, I mean, now I need to watch the whole thing, right? And at that part that we just ended at, he's, oh, not that part. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me take a quick drink of water. He's telling a little bit more about the background, how much money they're making. He helps people, couples especially, with their finances. And so what a great intro because it makes us go, okay, here's what happened. How, how is Ramit going to solve this problem? How is he going to guide here, right? Alejo asks, if you have a video podcast on YouTube, is it best to also set up your podcast on all other platforms as audio only? Yes, 100%. That is unless the video is required to get the same value, right? If your video podcast was all charts and graphs and you reference them all the time, then maybe it wouldn't work for video or for audio only. But in most cases, yes, right? So Ramit's is a really good example because he's just, that's just the, the editing and the production part of it. Right, it's there's it's he's in his home, the guests are on in their home, and that's really reassuring because most popular video podcasts today are filmed seemingly in a studio somewhere with other people. But you can do this on your own; it is possible, which is really cool. So, as we finish up here, I want to share with you a few things. You know, I asked pos podcasters in my Twitter following a long time ago, like, what's what's the best thing that has happened to you as a result of starting your show? Jason said, deeper connection with an audience, hands down. Jason has a running podcast. No other medium puts you in their ear when they're driving, running, et cetera, which is so true. David says, I got the chance to meet amazing people, real industry leaders who I never would have other, otherwise. I talked about that earlier, the connection that your podcast can make with others. Christy, being able to reach a larger audience and meeting amazing guests, love a good collaboration. Cal uh, Cal Caroline says, getting a fresh stream of amazing clients ready to work with me. People who have listened to your show, if you're asking for clients, I mean, they already know you by then, right? Which, which, is, which is great. Matt says, as I've uh, become more better, more confident speaker, noticeably less filler speech, and Ryan quit his job, Kelly Roach got, gets new clients. Glenn, who has a horse podcast, says he gets to earn a living talking and making best friends in my space, which is really, really cool and super encouraging. And I wanna just encourage you, so I want to ask you, what was the number one most helpful thing you learned today? We talked a lot about storytelling. We talked about interviews. We talked about the idea of getting viewers and listeners to your podcast. We talked about video podcasting as well. I'm curious to know in the chat, feel free to mention it, what are the most helpful things you picked up from today? In the meantime, while I'm waiting for your answer, I'm going to answer Life Inspired's question here, which is, if you were to start your entrepreneurship journey all over again today, what would you focus on first? Podcast, YouTube, affiliate marketing. It would either be podcasting or YouTube um, with affiliate marketing put into either one of those. Affiliate marketing is not separate than those. It is uh, a component of. And so I would say either, I mean, honestly, the podcast has done so much for me as much as I'm loving YouTube right now. If I was starting literally from scratch, 
because I know myself and I would be worried about what I would look like on camera. I would worry about the editing and I'd over perfect it. Um, the audio podcast is just so much easier. There's so much less to worry about with an audio podcast. So I think I would start with an audio podcast. Gonzo says, I, would, I love talking to people in my hobby space. So many different angles to view it from. Yeah, you did a audio podcast uh, on video yesterday. Excuse me, a video podcast on uh, your channel, Gonzo. I saw some of it with Mr. Chonkachi, which is great. All of it says Hot Flash Mama podcast, building audience and using groups, getting groups. The only thing with YouTube you have to uh, to have so many subscribers. Um, but if you're on a team, you can podcast both Facebook and YouTube. The truth is on YouTube, you don't need any subscribers for a video to go wild. Most views on a video, especially wildly growing videos, are not from subscribers. YouTube doesn't really care about the subscriber number anymore. It's can your video connect with a particular type of audience and they will go find that audience for you. Even if people are subscribed, it doesn't guarantee they'll watch your videos. That's that's kind of where we're at in the algorithm right now. Searching Facebook groups, high respect for the potential my podcast would bring and your call to action, do it, just get messy. You can't have binge unless you first cringe. Um, having attention grabber is the most important part. I think you covered it well, being able to not have any dead spots during the interview. Thank you for answering my question, Pat. This may be another talk, but would love to hear how you sold your food truck podcast. Yeah, I may, might talk about that later. I mean, I, I sold the food truck brand and the podcast came along with it. But thank you all for answering that. And I want to ask you permission. May I have permission, just say yes in the chat, to share a little about about our most popular online course, Power Up Podcasting. Uh, like I said, this is the course that was highlighted and, and uh, is pulled from for this training today. And I hope this was helpful for you. But I know a lot of you are interested in learning more and getting your hand held across the way and getting some support from a group of people, from my team. You will not be left alone because we've completely restructured how we do these courses. It's not a buy it for hundreds of dollars kind of thing and then you're on your own. You're actually going through it with others at the same time. So oh, awesome. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. So Power Up Podcasting 3.0 is out now. Yes. This was the first one of the first courses we launched. I showed you what that launch episode was like in episode 275. We're now up to episode 200 or no 780, I think. And uh, we are now at version 3.0 of the course, which was just launched a couple months ago because we always want to keep the latest and greatest in there for you. Now we take you through the pre-launch process, discovering your show concept, the tools and tactics, and all the things that you would need to create content ongoing because the long game is really important here for podcasting. How to, how to use the microphone to be attractive, right? Use different intonations and slow down every once in a while to make your point, just like I did uh, right there. How to be an effective interviewer, how to do call to actions on your episodes. This is all prep work for you and your show. And even if you have a podcast already, this can be a great uh, recap for you to make sure you're covering a lot of these foundational items here. How to know what's gonna make your podcast different, how to create your hook for your show, and then a personalized launch plan. When are you gonna launch? The date, and let's reverse engineer from that. And then comes your launch week. We walk you through that week. Here's how you get your podcast up on those directories. Here's how you get the most support. Here's how you can build buzz and anticipation for your podcast. And then launch a day, you go big, you celebrate and relax because you've done all you can to power up your business using Power Up Podcasting. And then you're not done because we're gonna learn how to automate some of this stuff, how to use other people to help you take time back and put it elsewhere. Uh, repurpose your show content and keep your show at the top of the rankings if possible. Monetize it, build your list, all those kinds of things. And the new video podcasting module helps you learn how to record, edit, and upload onto YouTube. And of course, the benefit of this is inside of the All Access Pass where this course lives now, you have access to the YouTube course as well that we talked about yesterday for the same price, just your monthly fee. So we used to sell this course for... $699. This was a standalone course. We've had thousands of students go through this. I've even taught this in person. This was uh, one of our success stories. Dr. Shannon, who I talked about earlier, she came to San Diego to tell her a uh, transformational story when I was teaching other people in person how to do power up podcasting. But today, the best way to get access to it and the most economical way for you going into 2024 is through what we call our all access pass. The all access pass is where you get access to not just the course, but all of our courses, the workshops, more than a dozen. You also get access to a community of people who are there, it's active, they're learning from each other, they're asking questions, they're answering questions, and our team is there to help support you as well, which is the huge differentiator between us and many other people. Plus you get guided pathways, right? It's like, okay, you're not just here to take this one course, but you, you take this course, you finish it, you get results, 
And now you go build your email list with email marketing magic or depends on what path you're on, you know, which direction you want to go. We have something for you. We don't want you to consume every course in our library. We want you to consume the right ones for you. And then, like I said earlier, we have these accelerators. The accelerators are the things where you are in real time going through a course between four to 12 weeks, depending on the course specifically, with other students. You are watching the same modules every single week. You are going through and having access to office hours every single week with students going through it with you, and it's been amazing. You can see the courses there inside that you get access to, A to Z webinars, Amped Up Podcasting, the Community Business Blueprint, Email Marketing Magic, Heroic Online Courses, Power Up Podcasting, of course. You still need help picking your niche. Smart from scratch would be the one to do. YouTube, like we talked about yesterday, and I said that earlier that these courses were being sold for hundreds of dollars. And there's also workshops in there too, like um, Pricing for Profit, which is run by our CEO, Matt. Click and Convert, which helps you get more clicks out of your emails and on your YouTube uh, t titles and thumbnails. Uh, podcast Advertising Made Easy. Traffic Booster. Here's the podcast pathway, for example. You start with Power Up Podcasting, and then you might go and watch the Podcast Advertising Made Easy workshop. And then you get into Amped Up Podcasting. We're actually, actually running an Amped Up Podcasting Accelerator next month that you can be a part of if you join. And, you know, a lot of people go, Pat, like, that's crazy because with all those things together, you might think that this would cost now thousands of dollars. I mean, all those courses together are definitely worth thousands of dollars, but we're just going to charge you the equivalent of what would be $59 a month for your investment. We charge per quarter, though. We want you to be in there at least for three months and to get access to the community and see the results and actually see other courses that you can get into from there. So this is a very, very, very easy for uh, those of you to make a decision. If you know this is the right thing, this is this is the time because the price will be going up at the start of 2024. So 179 per quarter, $59 per month to get access to the premium spot online with a team, people, myself, you get access to office hours with me too. And this is all you need to do. Go to smartpassiveincome.com slash all access and go from there. Hot Flash Mama says, all access pass for Christmas. Yeah, I mean, what an amazing Christmas gift. You just go to smartpassiveincome.com slash all access, hit that I'm ready button, and then you're good to go. And then you might be like Bob Baker, who mentioned a month ago in our community that he just passed 5,000 podcast downloads, which is awesome. Student of Arts. Or Rob from Disney Travel Secrets whose business has actually flourished as a result of the podcast. They actually have to turn business away now because they're getting way too many clients. And Rob messaged me the other day to say, Pat, you've changed our life. And it was Power Up Podcasting that did that. Now, there are events coming up in 2024 in January that you can look forward to. And again, if you are part of the All Access Pass already, you have access to these, or you can get in before the price increase at the start of the year. On January 16th, we're going to help you fix your funnel. If you're doing any selling of anything, we're going to be able to work with you to fix your funnel. On January 22nd, that is when the next accelerator begins. You can go through with other students to learn how to level up your podcast to get found. AMP is actually a acronym for Automate, Market, and Profit. Automate, Market, and Profit. So we're going to AMP up your podcast. And that's, that's all you need to do before the end of the year. So there you go. Thank you all so much for being here, and thank you to Team SPI who's in the chat as well. I see Heather and David and a few others. Uh, Sandy was in here earlier too, I think Kelsey. So um, podcasting is right there. We talked about how different this platform is versus others. When people get to that magic moment, they find your show, they like what they hear, and they put it in their pocket, I mean, you've got them. And what you could do with that attention is huge. Uh, and I know we're all going to do the right things with it, which is serve our audience. And that's why we're here too at SPI. You know, so to dab it up with Santa, first of all, happy holidays to all of you. Um, and yes, this is it. So let's, let's, I'll, I'll be here for the next few minutes to answer some questions for you if there are any. Um, love the networking going on in the chat. Yeah, that's great. Uh, there's a few people who have dog training um, uh, brands that are in here as well, connecting to, which is pretty cool. Uh, does this lock in the price or does it go up anyway? No, it locks in the price, Chris. So that, that would be the big benefit. Thank you for asking. So again, locking in the price at 59 uh, per year, or excuse me, 59 per month. And then you can also get even more of a discount if you just go with uh, with us for, for annual. 
Um, and there will be some special things happening in January for those of you who are part of the All Access Pass. So again, I appreciate you for that. Some of you are already in it, looks like, which is which is awesome. I like being a disaster before becoming a master comment. Yes. Sweet. Would love to connect with the other dog brands. Yeah, that's something that happens a lot in our community too. Just cre people uh, cross-promoting, learning about each other. There's actually been people who have actually formed businesses as a result of meeting each other inside of our communities, which is great. And we are all in on community. That, that's our focus. You know, the truth is we could generate more revenue by selling these courses individually. Um, we've sold mil millions of dollars worth of these courses individually over time. But we've completely changed the business model to be more focused on what is going to get the best results and where are things headed now. And where, headed, where things are headed now is there is an, th th there's a buffet of information out there, right? You can learn pretty much how to do any of this stuff on your own if you wanted to. But if that was possible, you would have done it already. So this is why we've put these things into our community because you are more likely. Studies show I think you're 65% more likely to complete a goal when doing it with other people. And that's not just a made up study. This is fact from the people who are getting results inside of our all access pass and inside of SPI pro. So I highly recommend you check it out. Just go to the link right, right here, smartpassiveincome.com slash all access. And we're there to help you. So tomorrow continues our webinar wonderland week, and we will be focusing on building an online course, I believe. Uh, on Thursday, we'll be building a community. And then on Friday, we're going to talk about affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing is great because it's, if you have a blog, a podcast, a YouTube channel, TikTok, doesn't matter. Affiliate marketing should be something that you're implementing into your business. We're going to go deeper into that. We just touched the surface of that today. Uh, people first, service, and love. Absolutely, Tanya. Um, what equipment would you suggest for those of us interviewing outside on the go? That's great. There's actually a complete lesson on that inside of Power Up Podcasting, but I would recommend a couple things. There is, uh, you could use your phone, in fact, but I wouldn't use the phone microphone. You could use something called the Rode Smart Lav. If you want the most economical, easiest to carry around with you method, that would be the one. Now, if you want to go a little bit more pro, I would bring a box called the Rodecaster Pro. There's actually a smaller one now called the Rodecaster Duo. Um, that and a computer will work to record really good, uh, high quality stuff. And all you need are two microphones, but they have to be XLR compatible microphones or the XLR cable has to fit into it. Um, they're not USB. Uh, so I would say that um, the other thing that you could use is a little micro recorder. There's the Zoom H4Ns or a Zoom H6N. You can use that to record. And again, having a plug-in mic so a person's just holding a mic, you're not doing the reporter back and forth thing is always best. Um, but on the go, those are great. But there's so many great microphones now. The Rode Smart Lab is great. There's also a wireless one by DJI, which is really good. The wi uh, What is that one called? The DJI Wireless Go. Let's see. It is the DJI Mic 2. There might actually be a 3 now, but let me see if I can show this to you. This is what it, uh, this is what it looks like here. And these I use when I'm filming on the go with Pokemon. I would imagine that uh, if placed correctly, these would be great for interviews on the go and very easy to use. And it's just the system is really, really nice. So great question. Thank you so much for that. Ed says, hey, Pat, thanks for everything you provide for us. I've been looking at my very early stats after six episodes. And honestly, there isn't much traction. What would you do? I would consider, and we talk about this in Amped Up Podcasting, but how might you, first of all, I would use the strategy of the forums and groups like we talked about today, number one. Um, because growth happens when you get in front of audiences who don't know you yet. This is why a lot of people struggle with podcasting when it comes to social media, because we think that publishing clips of these episodes on social media is going to get more podcast subscribers. But the truth is, it's not going to happen. Those people already know you exist, and they would have likely listened to your podcast episode and subscribed if they wanted to do that already. So how are we going to get in front of new audiences the number one way to do that is to be a guest on another person's podcast. And the reason that works so well is because when you're a guest on another person's podcast, not only are you showing up to this new audience, but you're already in their podcast app and they have to just look for your podcast and then subscribe from there. And then you're also getting endorsed by that person as well. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Yeah, I didn't know that. 
Pat, what would you think about transfer podcast audio to audiogram and upload to YouTube? That would not work. Um, if it is what I'm thinking you're talking about, which is you get that audio file and you turn it into an audiogram, which is essentially a uh, a visualization of that podcast that has like audio forms that move when you're talking. How is that of value to a person who's on YouTube? Um, it's not of value at all. Uh, we have to understand that on YouTube, people are there to to and, and, and need to be visually stimulated and just having like a few waveforms moving isn't really going to work. Now, you could do that and upload it for a YouTube short and make it a clip where you have a lot more forgiving uh, you have a lot more forgiving audience and a lot more forgiving just YouTube when looking at your shorts versus your longs. So that would be something that I would potentially consider. But I wouldn't just have an audiogram and, and upload that. I would have like what Rob has, some B-roll, some images, some stuff that's, that really supports that audio-only file for sure. Uh, let's see. My question is, do you have to pay people to come on your podcast? Uh, in most cases, you don't. I, w I wouldn't actually recommend that. Uh, there are some people who who might require you to do that, but I would say connect with people and build a relationship with them where they might be happy to just come on your show. But no, you don't have to do that. Um, you're paying them back with the platform and being recognized and having the ability to share their thoughts and to potentially show it to your audience as well. I mean, that is of value to them too. Um, also, don't always think that you have to have A-list celebrities on your show in order for it to be great. In fact, many of the episodes on the SPI podcast, on my podcast, the most popular ones are ones that are more relatable with people who are just like the audience and telling their transformational story. I mean, those people were happy to come on the show and would actually want to do it as much as possible. Um, those, those episodes that, I mean, th those get more downloads than the ones with Tim Ferriss or Gary Vaynerchuk on. It just shows you that if you have a great story to tell or something to share that's transformational, that can go a very, very long way. Question, if I wanted to invite friends, is there an affiliate program for All Access? Uh, there is an affiliate program for the All Access Pass. You can just reach out to uh, help at Team SPI or there might be some direction from Heather or Sandy or David here in the chat uh, to direct you on that before we finish up today. Uh, yeah, once you join the All Access Pass, you can join the referral program they have that immediately available to you if you're a part of the All Access Pass too. So, um, awesome. Hey everybody, thank you so much for today and also for yesterday if you were joining me on both days. And tomorrow we're gonna be talking about building an online course and how to structure that, how to know what to create the course about, how to actually plan it out, how to launch it, those kinds of things. And I look forward, um, Nicole says, I love guests who like to talk. I only ask one or two questions and they, I only ask one or two questions and they talk the entire time. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So anyway, thank you all so much for today. I appreciate you for coming in and listening and your attention. Please head over to smartpassiveincome.com slash all access. We have built something that is, I know, and I'm confident in saying this, the number one place to learn entrepreneurship because it's not just about the content that's there. It's about the people that are there who you can connect with. And even if you are just a lurker, even if you just kind of like aren't really wanting to participate in things, that's okay too because you can still pick up a lot of the conversations that are happening in the community right now. Tanya just joined for the year. Tanya, you are amazing. Thank you. Everybody here who's joining, I appreciate you. And I look forward to serving you tomorrow. So same time, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern here. We're going to talk about building an online course and get you set up. And it doesn't matter what platform you have. There might be information you have up in here that you need to get out there that can help you build your uh, revenue and, and help and serve more people too. So anyway, I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you later. Cheers, everybody.